my questions are objective. And I guess the problem I have with that is that beliefs, and, I, and what I'm, the question I'm asking is, do you, do you agree with this? Even though a belief may be, by definition, a subjective term, we can test for those beliefs. Um, the example I will give is, I believe in a mysterious force. We do not understand this force in any way. My job is contingent on this force. Um, and because of my belief that this force is real and exists, there are certain limitations that I impose on myself. Now, the force that I'm speaking with is gravity. When I'm in my aircraft, I do not step out of the door when it's off the ground. Now, there is no one who can tell you definitively what gravity is. What it, we can see the um, reaction to it. But again, I don't know if those reactions are real. In fact, I don't even know if what we're doing now is real. We could all be a brain in a jar for what, for what, you know, for argument's sake. And gravity is just part of the construct of the matrix, for, for, for lack of a better term. But I believe that. Therefore, I don't do as Neo did and walk off the side of a building. Now, again, I was a little disappointed because the 20 minutes that you had, you didn't address personally anything on the, um, on the argument. You talked about everything except how it pertains to you. Now, just as I can look at how gravity affects my decisions, I'm trying to apply the same methodology to how your belief in God affects your actions. And I'm seeing a disconnect there. So could you explain that for us? That's all I had. Go ahead. Go ahead on that one. Okay, bro. Uh, first of all, um, you talk about objectivity and, and as if Christians are interested in objectivity and names. Um, you know, I, I talked about, I told you, I talked about the resurrection of Christ and, you know, Tatticus and Josephus and, and you know, there's information there about uh, who Christ is historically and the Christian faith is based on um, a plausibility of structure of basic facts, okay? Um, so I think you're being a bit prejudiced there. Um, the second thing is, um, uh, I also you talk about um, the Apostle Paul and things like that before as well. You know, I gave you recent research. It's recent research I'm talking about um, by uh, Dr. Robbie on neuroscience. Uh, so I gave you neuroscience uh, and about how. Uh, actions work um, and if you thought about what I said you know it answers some of your questions about masturbation why people masturbate um, and um, you, you know I think that the issue of why I quoted Seneca and why I quoted um, why I quoted the Apostle Paul is I gave you two sources of a basic reality of basic experience is that you know we, you, you won't like this but we we fail we are we are not perfect and your logical construct is it, it it's a it, it's in it's in a make but we it's in a make believe world when we hit reality in real life you will find holes in your logical construct okay when you listen to bernard williams he's an ethicist and he talks about we've got to look at real life um, and, you know, even he, who's a perfect logician, like left his wife and messed up, you know, and he lived by logic and reason and wanted all things logical and reasonable, reasonable and he made a mess of his marriage. <laughs> but he's not, that doesn't mean to say he doesn't believe in logic and reason, it just makes, means he made a wrong turn in his life. So we've got to get back to being practical in everyday life. And that's the beauty of Jesus' teaching. It's about being a farmer. He talks about farming. He talks about it's all it's all in everyday life experience. Whereas the academy is in the university, and it's all um, away from real life. Um, you know, we've got to get into real life and how it works in real life. So when I quoted Seneca and the Apostle Paul, they're realists. They're working in the real life. They they know what it's like when someone comes home uh, drunk or when the wife's not happy or whatever. That's what we've got to get to as well as the logical uh, pincer movement of analysis, which 
which you like and which is very good but let's get into practical everyday life I'll give you a little story um, a person came to Charles Spurgeon this guy here uh, he was running a theological seminary and a guy came to him and said uh, can, will you let me into the we let me into your theological seminary and he said why should I let you in he says because I'm perfect so Spurgeon got a glass of water and threw it onto the onto the guy and it went over to the guy and the guy got really angry and said how dare you and Spurgeon turned around and said I thought you said you were perfect you're not so perfect now are you and that's the problem with your video your video is like sounds like negation you're a logical Pharisee that that you're hunting people around um, as if you can pin them down with your pincer move logic and expose their beliefs and hypocrisy but at the end of the day not everybody is perfect like I said the Bible agrees with you to a part actions do tell us about what people are like but your video is not realistic it's not rooted in real life we are not perfect even the most logical reasonable person will make mistakes will fail even if they live to their own perfect standards if you're making love to your wife you do not take a book of logic with you okay um, you you will go you will make love and while you're making love you might have a wrong thought of another woman or whatever you know it doesn't mean to say you don't love your wife logic and reason is great but it it doesn't deal with real life as well and you need the two in balance you're on this side logic and reason let's get it all sorted I'm saying yeah logic and reason but let's 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 just be practical and you've been reminded under the neath your video uh, about it you know a, a challenged about that and and you, you don't seem to realize that we've got to get into practicalities as well how does it work in real life thank you okay um I've stayed up most of the ten minutes, but seeing as we've cut a lot of the previous section short, um, and negation has a second question, um, I'm, I'm going to allow it to overrun a little bit if needs be. Um, do you want to have a second question, negation of P? Oh uh, yeah, I could. I mean, first is Jason. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. I want to just address the objectivity and the and the what, because what this speaks to is it goes into what you were saying as far as this is not a real world experiment. I definitely have to disagree on that. I mean, look at the definition of, of objective. It's not influenced by a person's feelings or opinions in considering and in and it represents the facts. I can't talk. Um, now, here's the thing. I don't believe you're sinning. You state that you're sinning, and you know you're sinning. That's objective. It is a fact that people sin. Objective statement. You state you believe in God. Objective statement. You have made a truth claim. As far as you're going, as far as I know, all I can go off of is what you say. You say you believe. I'm going to take that statement as existing. You said it. You claim that um, everything runs cr contrary to basically what I'm saying in, um, in this video. But the problem is, is that I can show line for line that there is objectivity to everything. People sin. They believe in God. The, the entire makeup of this is based in reality because it's a day-to-day -day experience that every person has. And again, Jason, I have to point out that it was never meant to, to validate or invalidate any religion, you know, Christianity or not. It was meant as a personal question to the theist as why do you act the way you do when you know God is watching. And we've been on blog TV now for, you know, 30, 35 minutes, and we still have not heard one word on you explaining the discontinuity between what you say you believe and what you believe. And I, I'm not trying to get mad here, but I am getting a little frustrated because we, we've talked about this many times before, and you know, I've, I've tried to make it clear. Um, even with the preface yeah. of my, um, my, um, my video, I, I say it over and over and over again. This is a personal experience. And don't apply it to a group. And 
answer the questions, not just tell me how Plinicus works into this, how, you know, I, get, I grant you, God is real, Jason. The problem is, is that it digs your hole deeper. It doesn't make it easier, and I'll explain that later because I know I'm running out of time. Again, okay, well, let's, let's allow right. Jason to uh, address that point. It's being suggested, Jason, that you are not answering the question. Well, you see, the problem with negation, and it goes back to, um, you know, if I write a play, um, and then I take it to somebody, and they criticize it, it's my baby. And because it's my baby, it's hard for me to look at it objectively. He's done this video, and it's his baby, and it's hard for him to look at it objectively. He's making a big assumption. He's making a big assumption that people will be perfect every time, that they will not sin before their loved one every time. And that's where he's made his big mistake. The fact is that people will not be perfect every time before their loved one. That's the point. If someone comes into the room and they're looking for, uh, and, and you're about to masturbate, or you're about to take drugs, you might, or you might be an alcoholic, and you don't drink because you love your loved one, and you won't drink in front of them, um, yeah, you might do it that time, but like I said, I told you about the neuroscience, it's related. A person's bad belie uh, negative beliefs beforehand, for example, a person's negative beliefs beforehand, say, they might be a al an alcoholic. They might have been an alcoholic once before, okay? And their family comes in, and so they're not going to drink. They were about to drink, but they don't drink, right? So they were, they were okay that time. But then another time, they might have gone through stress, or they might have gone through difficult time. Now, like I said, the, the neurosciences, the brain works on two aspects. Frontal lobe, it analyzes logic. The middle part of the brain... It, it deals with pain and pleasure. Now, research was done in 1950 that with rats that if the pet, the, the rats, um, if if rats um, um, are stimulated painfully, they think they're experiencing pleasure because they're connected to together. So the scientists were shocked when they provided a lever for the rats to receive pain. They actually went to it because they were receiving pleasure, and then they all died. So what that means is an alcoholic might not react to someone perfectly for a few weeks before their loved one, uh, but if they go through stress or if they go through anxiety, the pain reacts and affects the pleasure. And therefore, they're reminded of the old behavior, and then they end up uh, turning back to the alcoholism. So what I'm saying is he's assuming that everybody's going to be perfect every time before their loved one. And that's his big mistake. Again, it's not rooted in practical everyday life. This is okay for someone who likes to read logic at home. But what, is this okay if you're a nice middle class person and you've got lots of time to read logic? And it's very good and it's helpful to get us to think about it. And it has thought. But it's not okay when it hits real life. And he doesn't realize that. Okay, you, you, over, you overran a little bit there, Jason, but I, as I say, I didn't want to interrupt you. I think what we'll do is um, allow negation of B to come back briefly on that point. Then we'll take our five-minute break. And what I was also going to suggest is the next section that you have done is a back and forth for 10 minutes. Seeing as that we've, we've uh, run short on previous sections, do you want to extend that maybe to 20 minutes? Because that might be um, more interesting. And then... Uh, whilst you're thinking about that, can I just uh, remind people that the last 30 minutes is going to be a question and answers from the audience. If you would like to ask either of the uh, two speakers a question, uh, either uh, live, you can send a contact request to um, Magic Sandwich Show. Um, or alternatively, you, if you don't want to appear, you can put a, send a question to me on Blog TV. Um, please pose it as a question, not a statement, uh, and then I will use my discretion. Um, so, delegation, did you want to come back very briefly, and then we'll we'll take the uh, five minute break? I, uh, I'd love to, but I don't know. It. I mean, Jason, is that fair? Did I get an extra kind of bite at the apple, so to well, speak? Well, Jason never ran a little bit, so I, I, I'm trying to be as diplomatic as I can be. <laughs> oh, I, I see what the what the deal is. Um, the only thing I'd say is is that was all great information, but again, it didn't speak to the question at hand at all as far as I could tell. So okay, well, let's leave that for, we'll take the yeah. five minute break and then we'll come back and say, do you want to do 20 minutes to and fro? Uh, it, that, doc, uh, Dr. John